What do you sense heaven is calling you to do and be? What do you believe to be God's overarching purpose for creating you and then setting you down in this generation at this particular point in history? Those great questions come right out of Priscilla Shire's book, The Resolution for Women. Your response is going to help define who you are. And Priscilla, you point out that making resolutions is not what makes you faithful. It is not what makes you faithful. It points you in the direction of something you can be faithful to. But it is not what makes you faithful. We make New Year's resolutions all the time. But being faithful to it is the person that still has that New Year's resolution tucked under their arm and carrying it with them every day by the time we get back around to December 31st. Mm. So you can have faith in something. You can believe in something. But unless you're faithful to the call day in and day out, when it's easy and when it's hard, then you can't be classified by faithful until you've done that. Let's just frame that again. You can be a person of faith, but not be a faithful person. Yeah. We know lots of people, for example, who um, believe that it's, this is, there's a certain way to be a wife and a certain way to be a mom, a certain way to be a husband and a father, and yet when times got tough, they walked out on their family. Well, they're not classified as faithful. They had faith in something, but they did not stand firmly on the faith that they had in the midst of trying times. That's what marks a person of faithfulness, and that's what this particular resolution is about. It's calling you to be faithful and committed to all these resolutions that we've been talking about in these days, to make sure that you hang in there by God's grace and by the empowerment of his own spirit within you. Okay, maybe you've answered my next question. <laughs> How does... Oh, something you didn't like the sound of initially, yeah. a resolution help. A resolution helps by just pointing you in the right direction, by causing you to get your eyes set on something and then be faithful to, faithful to it like a cross-country runner that's running several, several miles. They know that the destination is there. They know what they're headed towards. There is a path set out before them. But whether or not they're going to keep running from point A all the way to point Z is determined by how faithful they are in the process of the journey. And so pointing you in the right direction is important because, listen, you're going to be faithful to something whether you set the, the goal or not. You are faithful faithful to something. You're either faithful to something that is a negative reality or faithful to something that is a positive one. So you might as well go ahead and chart the course that you would like to be running on because you're, as long as you're alive, you're running on some course. So you might as well make sure that you're being deliberate about the course that you're setting before you. Before you. And I want to thank you. Uh, I, I just now realize that it's, it's not just the themes that you've given us. Even listening to this resolution, the crafting of the goal the wording of it is beautiful for Amen. every one of these, all Amen. 13. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, because as, I, as I read that. it, you know, my heart leaps. I think, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to be. That's exactly what I want to achieve that's or do. Great. That's great. I hope that it resonates that way with, with people who pick up a copy of it. You wake up in the morning listening for the hush of heaven. I will say that I try to every morning. Sometimes if all three boys jump in the bed before I have a chance to really awaken, then, then it might not that. happen. <laughs> but oftentimes, you know, before my foot even hits the floor in the morning, I will just lay there in the bed for a few moments, sometimes pretending to still be asleep, and I can feel little people breathing on me, but I'm still pretending to be asleep. And for just a second, I say, Lord, today I've got plans, yeah, but I'm going to try to consecrate this day to you. So that if something in my plan aren't really what you had in store for today, if you've got extra things, Lord, that I hadn't even mapped into what I wanted to do today, I, wanna, I want to listen for the holy hush of heaven, the whisper for, from God's own spirit. So, Lord, not my physical ears. Would you heighten my spiritual sensitivity, my spiritual ears, so that I can hear you if you're calling me to be kind to a stranger that I meet in the grocery store, to pull aside for a moment and have a spiritual conversation with one of my sons who brings up something when I'd rather be, uh, when I had planned right now to be doing something different. Would you help me to just recognize the holy nudges that point me in the direction of what you would have me to do and then be faithful to do it even when I plan something different. Mm, I love that. That's great. That's God getting glory in your life Hopefully, every day. I pray. And I love page 81. Look, I put love this. Um, <laughs> as you audibly speak these biblical statements over your life and the lives of your loved ones, your mind will be renewed, your faith strengthened, your actions and attitudes transformed. And we have two, oh, more. Five pages. 
five of pages. scriptures. Absolutely. Five yeah. of, of beautiful scriptures that you're going to want to put on your fridge. You're going to want to speak over your children. You're going to want to remind yourself that this is immutable truth. It is. These and are eternal powerful words. powerful truth. I, don't, I think that we have stopped recognizing the actual literal power of scripture. It's like for a, a cancer patient that sits in chemotherapy. There's not necessarily anything happening on the outside of their body, but inside major transformation is taking place mm -hmm. because they're submitting themselves to that chemotherapy treatment. This is God's word in us. It's like a radiation treatment for sin, for things that are blocking out the goodness of God, the voice of God being experienced in our life. And when we sit under it, when we hear it being spoken, when we meditate on it, when we allow it to permeate our lives and the lives of those we love, there is transformation transformation taking place, the renewing of our minds, Roman 12, 1 says. And so here's the power of the Word of God. When you just have affirmation st statements written down, which I've written down and just kind of conformed a little bit from, um, from scripture passages. And when you, yeah, like you said, photocopy them and put them on your, your bathroom mirror, put them up on your refrigerator using a magnet, and they're just there for you to read over and remind yourself in little nidbits at a time, maybe five or six of them at a time, remind yourself what the word declares about you. You will see that it will be a powerful effect on your life and the lives of those you love. Oh, just a few. I will walk by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. Psalm 118, verse 6. On and on it goes, five pages. Just imagine filling your heart, your mind with these truths. And honestly, it's the only way we can be faithful. It's the only mm. way. I mean, this resolution to be faithful, faithfully his, the only way you can do that is if you are empowered by God's own word. If you have been girded about and kind of hemmed in on every side of your life when you're walking through all the turmoil of life, you got to be hemmed in by what God's word is speaking to you and over you in, able, in order to be able to walk the path that Keeps is set before you. On you. course. Absolutely. Well, this book is meaningfully dedicated to women of resolution who shaped your life. Yeah. It's almost like a Bible verse. My mother Lois, my grandmothers Evelyn and Eileen, and my aunts Ruth Ann, Elizabeth, Bernice, and Beverly. Your role models. Wonderful women. They are great role models. And I do not for a moment take it for granted that the Lord has given me really such a great legacy of godly women and faith in my life. And so, yes, I can, I just have to look up one generation to my mom or up another to my two grandmothers or to the sides uh, for my aunts. And I get to see women, um, a couple of them single, never been married and have walked in purity these 60 years. One of them is 68 years old. Mm -hmm. Just walked in purity before God and holiness and know they are not perfect, but they sure have lived a great example of what faithfulness looks like to just do what God has called them to do, even when they did not prefer it, and yet they found that God, heaven's whisper, it was heaven's whisper on their heart to pursue a certain path for ministry that was difficult at times, mm -hmm. and yet they were faithful to the call. Even my own mom, she did not sign up to be a pastor's wife. That was the last thing. In fact, she specifically prayed and said, Lord, I will do anything for you except to be a pastor's wife. And of course, <laughs> when I was one year old. Danger. Yes, of course, when I was one year old, God uh, called my father to start the church that I still attend to this day. And for nearly 40 years now, my mother has been faithful as a pastor's wife in ministry. That's faithfulness. It's wow. over the long haul when you do stuff that you really never thought you wanted to or could, and yet you allow God to not only call you in that direction, but then give you the grace and empowerment to stick in with it and to stay on the path that he's called you to. And your dear mother has been a suitable helper for a man who has become a quite a famous preacher, Tony Evans, mm -hmm. and you have gone to your daddy's church since you were one. Yes, still do. Sit right there on the second row and, and receive great teaching from God's Word. Very blessed. You know, as you shared last Wednesday, I just want to highlight that uh, your husband, Jerry, is the first of a godly generation. Didn't yes. have a present father. He did. Uh, he's writing a new story. He is from his side of the family. And would you know that I really feel like, as I've prayed and said, Lord, what, what am I? What is my calling as his wife? Why did you yoke us up together? The Lord has so clearly spoken to me that my role in our relationship is to help my husband to start a brand new line of sh of Shire men. And the mm -hmm. Lord has given us three sons with which to do it. And that is my goal. My primary responsibility is to be a good wife to my husband. And I'm trying to figure that out. And to be the best mom I can to these three boys and I will spend my life trying to figure that out how I can honor God by mothering my boys in a way that brings him glory. Boy does that ever sound good and you know this time I saved the resolution to the end of our segment. Are you faithfully his? Are you resolved that I will live as a woman answerable to God and faithfully committed to his word? 
might all be new to you as you're listening today. Why not let our Bible teacher walk you through eternal truths in a very readable, uh, very reader-friendly, short chapters. I mean, it's, it's just very digestible. And uh, both books are available in case you're the man watching. The Resolution for Men, The Resolution for Women. Watch this.